Good morning. The gospel for today, the second Sunday of Easter, comes from the gospel of John, the 20th chapter. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked in the room where the disciples were for fear of the temple authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Having said this, he showed them the marks of crucifixion. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw Jesus, who said again to them, Peace be with you. As Abba God sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you retain anyone's sins, they are retained. It happened that one of the twelve, Thomas, nicknamed Didymus, or twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, we've seen Jesus. Thomas's answer was, I'll never believe it without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand into the spear wound. On the eighth day, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them, saying, Peace be with you. Then to Thomas, Jesus said, Take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Jesus said in response, my Savior and my God. Jesus then said, you've become a believer because you saw me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus, Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs not recorded here in the presence of the disciples. But these have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah the only begotten, so that by believing, you may have life in Jesus' name. The Gospel of our Lord. I offered to record a sermon to be shared with the congregations of the Northwest Intermountain Synod as a way to give hardworking rostered leaders a little bit of a break. This has been an incredibly stressful time for everyone. And I don't, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Those of us who are able to continue to go to work do so at the risk of our own health and well being. Those of us who are at being asked to shelter in place do so. However, we have entirely different things that we're dealing with mental we're all dealing with mental health issues we're dealing with grief we're dealing with uncertainty it's a huge worldwide traumatic event that we are living through every single day we don't know the answers no one knows the answers and so we find ourselves clinging to whatever expert in whatever field declares that they know more and know better than anyone else and we listen to them and we hold on to them and we hope and pray that they are right but when it comes right down to it no one knows no one knows when this will end no one knows when life will get back to normal no one even knows if there will be a return to normal or if we will simply adjust and adapt as human beings do to a whole new normal. Some people like to say, oh, we'll be done with sheltering in place in two weeks and then we'll open up the, the, the country and everything will be fine. And there are others who say that we could be sheltering in place for another year or more. My hope is that the truth is somewhere in between those two extremes, but again, no one knows. Easter was a week ago today, 
And I don't know about you, but my Easter was weird. I didn't feel like attending a worship service, virtually or otherwise. And so instead what I did was sit with the Easter story from Mark's gospel and reflected on what it means to be an Easter people when we are surrounded by death. The thing that I want to remind us all about is that just because Easter fell flat for most of us doesn't mean that it doesn't fall flat for some people every year. There are some people who carry grief with them so great that every year Easter feels hard to believe. A wild fantasy. So maybe what we're learning in this strange year with the coronavirus is how some of our brothers and sisters live every day with the constant specter of grief and loss pulling at their limbs until all they want to do is crawl into bed and not crawl out again. There were no trumpet serenades. There were no glorious, he is risen, he is risen indeed, ringing from the rafters of our sanctuaries. There were no sunrise services. There were no Easter lilies. There were no allergy attacks from too many Easter lilies. There was us and there were screens. Maybe later in the day, there was a shared meal with people on other screens eating different meals in different parts of the world or the country. Maybe there wasn't. Maybe you are sheltering in place alone. And so a holiday that is oftentimes and normally something that you are brought into your family grouping was spent alone, just like all the days that went before and all the days that will come after. It seems to me that this Easter season feels particularly upper roomy. I understand in a way I never really did before, what it must have felt like for those disciples to be gathered together in an upper room with the doors barred and locked because they were afraid of temple authorities coming in and killing, arresting and killing them for being followers of Jesus. They have done everything they can to protect themselves. And yet Jesus comes and stands among them risen with his wounds. He shows them the holes in his hands and he shows them the hole in his side from the spear and he tells them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. In such a time as what the disciples were living through, such a greeting is so extraordinary. Their lives are literally at stake. They are hiding because if they go out in public, they stand a higher than normal chance of dying. Maybe that sounds familiar in a way it never has before. They're gathered together in this upper room and Jesus suddenly appears among them, showing them his wounds and saying, peace be with you. And they are amazed and they rejoice. Thomas, one of the 12 who was not there, we don't know where he was. We don't know if he was with other uh, followers of Jesus. We don't know if he was just out of the room. We don't know anything about that. But he was not with them that first Easter evening. And when he finally comes in and the disciples are excited and they say, we've seen the Lord. Thomas says, unless I can put my fingers in the holes of his hands, and unless I can put my hand inside the hole in his side, I will not believe. 
Thomas had been a faithful follower of Jesus. He had listened to those promises of Christ and he had internalized them in such a way that he was willing to die with Jesus. Only to see those promises and that relationship with the Savior seemingly to come up null and void. I've never understood people who've bashed the doubting Thomas as though shame on him for not believing that Jesus came back. But he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He needed proof. He needed to be able to put his fingers in those holes, the nails left. He needed to be able to, to reach into Christ's rib cage and feel the heartbeat of our Lord against his fingers. He needed that. And so a week after Easter, the day we're commemorating right now, the disciples were once again in the upper room with the door bolted and locked. And this time Thomas was there and Jesus comes and stands among them once again saying, peace be with you. And he goes to Thomas and with not a word of judgment, he simply provides what Thomas said he needed. Here, the hole in my hand. Here, the hole in my side. Don't doubt, Thomas. Believe. Faith can be hard to come by in days that are filled with chaos and fear and grief. Even if you haven't lost someone to the coronavirus, we're still, all of us, dealing with grief of varying levels. Whether you are a high school senior who's had your senior spring completely erased, losing prom and graduation and all of those wonderful things you've been looking forward to. Whether you had a wedding scheduled this spring or summer and you've had to postpone that. Whether you were going to go on a major trip, maybe a once in a lifetime bucket list kind of trip and that has fallen by the wayside or maybe you are sheltering in place separated by the people that you are separated from the people that you love because they are sheltering in place even just a few miles away we're all in a state of grief we mourn the loss of familiar routines we mourn the loss of events. We mourn the loss of relationships, even if those relationships will come back on the other side of this. For now, for now, we are limited to interaction just like this. And it's not enough. The world is heavy right now and uncertain and we want answers and there are no answers to be had. I think this is why the story of Doubting Thomas is so important for us today in particular because Jesus in either one of his appearances to the disciples either on Easter evening or on the week after Easter Jesus doesn't offer answers. He gives peace. gives peace. And so you who are beloved of God and beloved of me, peace be with you. In this storm, in this trial, in this grief, in this uncertainty, in this time of loss, the peace of Christ be with you. There will be days when it doesn't feel like enough and there will be days when it is all that you need, but you have it given to you freely by the risen Lord himself. So come.
Place your fingers in the holes of the nails. Reach in and feel the beating heart against your fingertips and know, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the peace of Christ is with you all because he has said it is. In these days and weeks that follow, be careful of yourselves. Be careful, full of care of one another. We are all experiencing something that has not been experienced for generations. And it's okay to be sad and it's okay to be angry and it's okay to be confused and it's okay to be anxious and depressed and worried. It's okay to have moments of hilarity. It's okay to have moments of quiet joy. All of that is okay and it makes sense. But never ever forget that Christ is with you always in the midst of all of it loving you, forgiving you, and granting you his peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.